Turkey's opposition leader Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu aims to oust President Recep Tayyip Erdogan after a two-decade reign in the upcoming elections. Kılıçdaroğlu was born in 1948 in the eastern city of Tunceli, in a family from the Alawi religious minority, the second largest religious group in Turkey after the Sunni Muslim majority. Kalijarolu is a former economist who climbed the ranks within governmental institutions as a corruption fighter. He held top-level financial and economic roles in Turkish institutions, including the Ministry of Finance. Upon his retirement, his star shone in politics. In the 2002 elections, Kelly Darolu won a seat in the Turkish parliament with the CHP. The same year, President Erdogan came to power. In 2007, he became the deputy speaker of the CHP parliamentary group. His media presence increased significantly after he published evidence of corruption in Turkey. In 2008, Kelly Darolu accused the AK party deputy chairman Dengir Mir Mehmet Firat of corruption, saying a quantity of heroin was sized in a truck belonging to a company where he holds the biggest shares. Shortly after, Firat resigned, citing health conditions. A year later, Kelly Darolu ran for the Istanbul's mayoral office but lost to AKP party candidate. In 2010, he became the CHP's seventh chairman after incumbent Denis Baykal resigned following a sex scandal. Kelly Jarolu ran as the only candidate and gained the majority of votes. The year 2014 saw the first revolt against Kelly Jarolu within the CHP party. Ahead of the presidential elections of 2014, Kelly Jarolu partnered with MHP and ran with a joint presidential candidate, Ikmal Eddin Ehsanolu. Kelly Jarolo stood behind Ehsanolo despite objection from within the party that as a candidate he resonated more with the MHP base according to polls. And when the elections were lost, a group of CHP deputy headed by then Ankara deputy Emin Ulkal Torhan demanded Kelly Jarolo resignation and the convening of an extraordinary congress. Kelly Jarolo survived the extraordinary congress vote and was re-elected. 2017 was an eventful year for the CHP and Turkey. In the 2017 referendum, in which the presidential system was replaced by the parliamentary system, a controversy surrounding the alleged counting of unsealed ballots created a crisis within the CHP party. As many were calling for a voting recount, Kelly Jarolu called for calm. He was later criticized for not calling for protest and remaining passive against alleged elections fraud. In the same year, Kelly Jaroro's fame spread beyond Turkey when he walked from Ankara to Istanbul along with his supporters as part of the March for Justice protest campaign to draw attention to increasing repressions by the AKPA party government. Turkey's municipal election of 2019 dealt a blow to the AKPA party's strongholds. Kelly Jaroro's CHP swept to power in Turkey's most prized cities, including Ankara and Istanbul, where it ended 25 years of rule by Erdogan and his party. On 28 November 2022, six opposition leaders led by Kelly Jarolu made the following announcement. It's time for democracy. The six opposition groups known collectively as the National Alliance or the Table of Six. The group has been meeting regularly since February 2020, and in November they announced a package of constitutional amendment proposals aiming to change Turkey's hyper-presidential regime adopted by a popular vote in 2017 to a parliamentary system. The package proposes the reinstatement of legislative and budgetary powers of the parliament, strengthening the system of checks and balances. Two months before Turkey's presidential elections, the National Alliance unveiled Kemal Kalijarolu as their presidential candidate. Weeks before the election, Kalijarolu pulled very well against Erdogan, who has been in power for the past two decades. The opposition bloc led by Kalijarolu vowed to reverse many of Erdogan's policy on economy, civil rights and foreign affairs in what many see as the most consequential election in the Republic's 100-year history. But since Erdogan took power, Turkish politics has changed, as well as the country. And the story of Kali Jarolo's rise within the CHP is an excellent way to see how. In an over decade of leadership of the party, Kali Jarolo tried to change the perception of the CHP 
as the party of the elite, which prides itself on establishing modern secular Turkey following the struggle for independence to the party of the masses. In the past, the party's strong secularist and Turkish nationalist core has made it difficult for the CHP to gain support among the Kurds and the religious conservatives. But the party discourse has been changing. Since he came to power within CHP in 2010, I can say that he kind of tried to change the political party into a what we would call as like a catch-all party. The main aim of the party became to get votes from, you know, like the majority of the society, from whoever they can get votes from. So we are seeing that, you know, for example, when he came to party, the party's approach to several issues in the society has changed. For example, you know, like the, the approach of the party to the Kurdish issue took a different turn. <laughs> Ya Allah aşkına bu ülkenin insanların vicdanına sesleniyorum ya. TRT'nin TRT Kürdü diye bir yayını var. Bir kanalı var. Yayın yapıyor bu. Nasıl olur da buraya bilinmeyen bir dil diye yazıyorsunuz? Bilinmeyen bir dil. Binlerce yıldır konuşulan bir dili neden bilinmeyen bir dil yazıyorsunuz? Kelly Jarolu has also reached out to more conservatives throughout the National Alliance to help broaden his support ahead of the presidential election. Experts say that although these parties do not have a large electoral base, they serve to grant legitimacy to the CHP-led opposition bloc in the eyes of the masses. In a way, voters are told that this coalition is ideologically diverse and would block any attempt by the main opposition party to re-embrace its century-old political platform and use secularism as a tool to regulate people's lives in Turkey, including their religious lives. Tayyip Erdoğan'a karşı mı birleşiyoruz? Bu kadar emeği, bu kadar küçük bir hedef için mi harcayacağız? Yok böyle bir şey. Hepimizi birleştirmesi gereken Asıl mesele şudur. Dünya ile rekabet etmek ve kazanmak ve hakkımız olanı almak. Türk'ü, Kürdü, Sunnisi, Alevisi, başı açı, başı kapalısı, solcusu, sağcısı bu müşterekte birleşmeli. We are seeing Kılıçdaroğlu directly addressing more, you know, like conservative uh, religious women in the society asking for their support. I think it's been a few months now that he started this, you know, helalleşme movement where kind of he was saying that, you know, we are going to apologize for our party's uh, mistakes or sins, let's say. And if you would look at his first, you know, like campaign as the leader of uh, CHP in 2011, the main slogan of the party was a CHP for everyone, right? Herkes için CHP. So this is, I think, kind of summarizing this new approach by Kılıçdaroğlu administration uh, within the CHP. And they, you know, like try to rebrand the party as well, calling it the new CHP, Yeni CHP. Despite his left liberal political stance, Kelly Jarolu shows no compromise when it comes to refugees residing in Turkey. He has promised to send Syrians and Afghans back to their country if elected president in 2023. I've come to the zero point of the border. I have come to tell my nation that I remain determined on an issue. My presidency has two important goals. The first is to send the Syrians back to their homeland. The second is to send those who came illegally via Iran back to Iran. Turkey shelters over 3.6 million Syrians, making it the world's largest refugee hosting country, along with 300,000 refugees from other nationalities. In 2022, President Erdogan unveiled a plan to return 1 million Syrian refugees to their country, marking a sharp contrast from his initial criticism of the opposition for lacking humanity over the electoral promise of sending refugees back. Human rights groups worry that some of the displaced Syrians and Afghans will be returned against their will in a breach of international treaties. This is one of the topics that um, the coalition is going to get some criticism and is already getting criticism from the more, you know, like left libertarian um, circles in, in the society who also, you know, like the, the, the civil society who has been actively engaging with the, uh, with the refugees um, in the southeast of the country for a very long time now. Um, but they also, I think, you know, like trying to play this they try to use this like rhetoric in order to appeal to the more nationalistic voters in the society. 
and the situation, the economic situation, as I would say, also contributing to this.